ridiculousness. So I'm recording this thing to ridiculousness. I actually have the video capture going for this computer and for the other computer and the big blue button is recording my video capture as well. And one of them is failing, so I don't feel bad about doing multiple stuff. Got it? Anyway, can you hear my voice? Yes, no, I don't know, I can't hear you. Yes, you can. How's the audio coming through? Is it good quality? Is it bad quality? What? All right. Can you see my computer screen writing? Let me know when you can. Don't worry, you shouldn't be able to do yet. Not yet. See, I know what exactly they can see because this computer shows me what they can see. Come on, dude. Sorry, this computer's thinking, my computer's thinking about wanting to work. It hasn't thought about it yet. I mean, it, it's still thinking. Oh, 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 it's starting, oh my gosh, it crashed. Seriously, what happened? <laughs> Seriously, I'm complaining about you guys, I'm complaining about you guys coming in and like, well, why aren't you guys on time? And then like, and then you guys are like, oh, well, we, we're on time, but it doesn't matter because you, you can't get your class to work. There we go, there we go, there we go. Awesome. I'm going to start the recording on this one, too. And it will be th recording trifecta. What's going on, folks? Can you see my computer, or can you hear my voice? Is the audio coming through? Can you hear my audio? Did they say yes? Yes. Can you see me say hello? Like visually, see it. Hello. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Let's get this party started. All right, so check this out. I'm going to take up the full 90 minutes because I've been wanting to lecture to you guys for like three weeks now. And each week, we've had some kind of thing pop up on Fridays, and I won't, don't get my 90-minute session with you guys. So that's why I feel like I've fallen behind is I was actually pretty good in like posting the homework up like already and getting you guys on board. And I'll be honest with you, we're flying through this pretty quickly. Uh, okay, we're going at a, at, a, at, a, at a pace that I'm not I'm not too disappointed in. I just wish that I had those two Fridays that I lost. Because one was Grit Fest and the other one was Good Friday. I mean, it's not like I'm complaining about Grit Fest and Good Friday. But, I mean, Good Friday's good. But um, what I'm saying is I'd like to have that time to really work with you guys. And I only had like these hour-long hour -long Wednesday sessions and they just weren't cutting it. So I'm gonna take up the full 90 minute session today. All I'm gonna be doing with you guys is doing a whole bunch of uh, example problems. Getting you guys used to doing that. I'm gonna do the example problems for you. I'll even do maybe one or two of your actual homework problems. And then I really wanna to get to uh, the quadratic equation and I might show you something that will blow your mind by the end of today. Cool? I just want you guys to get the process internalized and really get it down. All right, so check this out. What we're doing is we're we're taking something like this. Dude, okay, one second. Hold on, I'm gonna climb up on my desk. Hold on. I might be able to close that. That thing. Is that better? That's better, yeah. Also very loud as a teacher. One second. There we go. Come on, give it to me. What is that? Yeah, well that's why. Come on, buddy. There we go. That's better, yeah. Alright. 
One second, sorry. Check, check, one, two. Can you hear? Can you hear? Check, one, two. All right, awesome. Sorry, I, I, I had to take off my headphones because I had to climb on top of my desk and push on it a couple times. Um, I gotta fix that roof kind of too, but I'll do it later. All right, so check this out. Here's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, we got this thing right here, 3x squared plus 18x minus 12. What is, this This is a quadratic equation. Everyone agree? Yes, sir. How can you identify that it's a quadratic equation? X squared. Because of the x squared, because of the two up there, whenever you have a square situation, you have a quadratic. You got a little curvy thing as the graph, right? Now, this is in what kind of form? Do you guys remember what this is called? Starts with an S. Standard. There we go. It's in standard form. You remember? Remember how I told you guys? I, remember we started off this this year with ax squared plus bx plus c, and you guys had to find the coefficients for that because that's the general form of the standard form. There's number x squared plus number plus number, and all those numbers can be different numbers. That's why I have an a, b, and c. Cool. So this is in standard form. This is totally useless to us. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say totally useless to us because it, it will actually become useful next chapter. But for now, this is kind of useless to us, right? Like the only thing we can really tell from this is the y-intercept. Now, remember, how do you find the y-intercept? You plug in x equals zero. So x equals zero nicely kind of kills that thing and that thing, and then your y-intercept is negative 12. I mean, that's that's really the only good use for this thing. Which is not really that, I mean, like, so what? <laughs> you found out where it crossed the y-axis, whoop de doo Got it? What we really want to do is we want to figure out, well, what x values makes this true? And to do that, I showed you this completing the square technique. But last week, or not last week, on Wednesday, Raven was asking, hey, I was having trouble with this homework because um, the complete the square technique doesn't work when there's a number in front of that x squared term. All the previous complete the squares we've done, the a value was 1. If a is 1, then there's no number in front of it. We don't even bother to write the number there. But if a is not 1, then it becomes a little bit tougher. And so I showed you a trick how to do that. All right? Uh, let me, let me, let me work, work my magic here. Sorry. Computer's thinking. There we go. Uh, come on. Think about it. I'm your friend, remember? I give you good food. You need to play with you. I mean, you need to, to kind of help me out here. All right. So here's what we do. We divide through. If, if, if I want to get rid of that 3, I, I want to turn it into a 1. I don't want to get rid of it as a turn it into a 0. I want to get rid of it by turning it into a 1. What do I do? Starts with a D. Divide. There we go. I divide by 3. But I need to divide everything by 3. Oh, you thought it was just hypothetical. Okay? Alright. So I divide everything by 3. That turns this thing into a 1x squared. And if it's alright with you, I'm just going to erase that 1. Because you don't really need it. If it's a 1x squared, it's the same as x squared plus 6x minus 12, or minus, not 12, oops, 4, equals, oh, I forgot to divide this by 3. What's 0 divided by 3? Zero. 0. All right, folks, I got a question for you. How's the audio coming you through? Does it get glitchy? Can you not hear? Hello, check, 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 check. Okay, all right, here's what we're gonna do. If you can still see my computer screen, we're gonna switch the audio to this computer. This computer is the one that is a pain in the butt as far as audio. This one always kicks me out. 
three, four times a, a session. But if the audio comes through better over there, I don't mind using it. Check, 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 check. check. Audio check. Turn off this audio. Oh, they're saying something. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? Okay. Check. Oh, I got kicked out. Today's a fun day for Matt. You can hear, but I bet you can't see the screen changing because it's not changing because you can't see. Thanks, Rune. I can't write. I know. It's just it's just one of those days. It's one of those things. All right. I might have like uh, a, I, I have a very good idea for a a fix. I'm gonna turn on the camera. I'm gonna erase that board. I'm just gonna write up on the board. Uh, I hate technology. I'm a tech teacher and I hate technology. Can't stand it. I just love it. I love it so much I want to rip my face off. All right, give me a second, guys. I'm just trying to get my my computer. It's a bittersweet. You guys are all like, this is so awkward. We're watching Mr. Dalton get so frustrated. Come on, computer, do something. All right, shockwave players now. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Um, is there a is there a cloth down there? Erase the board for me. <laughs> Check, one, two. Can you hear me? Can you see my ugly face? My pretty, pretty face. All right, we're going old school on this. We're actually going to do this. I'm going to turn this thing, the camera. I'm going to turn the camera towards that board thing, and I'm actually going to use the board again once again. All right, let's get this thing started. Okay, I need to see this so I can see the problem, and then I'll actually turn the thing this way. There's justice. Just so you can sit in this chair. Is that on the other side or is that on the other side? Oh, it's on this side. Yeah, I was actually on the other side. I do want the room though. I need to erase this. It's my daughter's drawing. I need to erase it. It's so cute. That's why I need to erase it. It's in the recording so you can always go back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can just draw it again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I need an eraser, so. <laughs> yeah, That's alright, she's not gonna remember. <laughs> alright. Alright, can you see me? Where are all my pens? There's a red one there. That's not always that good. Is there a black expo around here? Blue? Blue works, maybe. Alright, let's see. Whoa. We good? What does that say? No. Awesome, then you can see it. Okay, so check this out. Here's what we're going to do. Oh, there it is. I can't turn in this thing. This is all day's too fat. Okay. 
I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out. I'm gonna teach like backwards. I need you guys to tell me what they're saying. Maybe Justice, why don't you come on over here? You can I'll read. Move that keyboard and then move it to the. No, that's all right. That's all right. I'm I'm good. That's all right. All right, ready? All right. So do that. Um, what was it? Three x squared plus eighteen x minus twelve. Plus twelve. Minus twelve. Minus twelve equals zero. All right. And then we're gonna, we divide it through by three, and so we got x squared plus six x minus four equals zero. By the way, what is zero divided by three? Zero. Still zero, so we're good there, right? Because I divided everything by three. I divided this by three, this by three, this by three, this by three. Why, pray tell, did I put a big space there? Because, well, I'll tell you, because, what, what, you're going to say something? to solve the x first to get it for Because I'm going to use this stupid trick that I've been teaching you guys. It's not a stupid trick, it's actually quite clever. But I'm going to use this ridiculous trick, it's called complete the square trick, okay? You put a big space over here, and leave enough space for two numbers. Those aren't negative signs, those are just like, you know, spaces for two numbers, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some number, and I'm going to subtract some number at the same time. What is the number that I'm going to add? Do you guys know? Oh, hey, Raven's got it. It's b over 2 squared. So what does that mean? What number is that, Raven? 18. No. Uh-uh. -uh. 6 over 2 is what? Square that. 9. It's 9. B is the 6. You divide that by 2, and then you square it, and you get 9. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Square that is 9. We cool with that? And then uh, I'm going to add 9 over here, but since this is an equation, I can't just do that. I would have to subtract 9 over here. Now, I think that I showed you this in two slightly different ways. Um, I think previously what I did was um, I, I said, okay, well, if I add 9 to this side, I'm going to add 9 to that side, right? Yeah, th this was like the black way and the red way or something like that last, last week, or not last week on Wednesday. I, you know, I, if I add 9 here, I can add 9 here. It's the same thing. If I add 9 here, I can subtract 9 on the same side. Because, I mean, like, if I put this 9 on the other side, it would be the same thing. I'm going to stick with this way, though. I'm going to keep everything on one side of the equation. So, since I did the baby way with you, I'm going to do the little bit more advanced way. It's not even that much more advanced. It's just a little bit different. All right. See these first three numbers here? I can make that... That, the reason why I added 9 is because I can make this like this. And there's some number that goes in here. And that's true for those first three numbers. What's up? You alright? What? What happened? Oh, that's okay. Do you know how messy this office is? It's not like the trash on the ground is going to kill me. Alright. What number should I go over here? What number should go right here? Do you guys know? Three. Yeah. Positive 3. Because, I mean, if you want to do some side work, let's do it on the side real quick. x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? Foil, first outer inner last, that would be x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. You guys agree? first, outer, inner, last. So that's x squared plus 6x plus 9. Hey, that's the same thing over here. This right here is the same as that right there. Cool? So this right here is just another way to write that. The second one just explains it more. This one right here? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is just me checking, checking. that this is the same thing. So I'm not trying to pull the sh oh, a sheet over your guys' eyes. I'm showing you that, like, even though I wrote these three numbers as this one thing, you guys can see where that comes from, right? In fact, that's the whole point of adding 9 over there 
is so that you can make it into a perfect square. Okay. All right. So this was just on the side, just for me, so that I can prove to you that I'm not, you know, just pulling this stuff out of my throwing it up on the board. Got it? Yeah. All right. I still need to deal with these other two numbers. That's negative 13. Right, because negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13. That's just the, the leftover stuff. Are we cool? Look at this. Look at this, because I think this is cool. This right here, I didn't really change anything. This is the same as this. If you were to foil this out, you would get exactly this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were to foil this out, you would get close to this. So I didn't really change anything here. Are we cool? But this thing you can solve for now. And, and also, you know what's really nice about this thing? This is the same exact function. However, this is not in standard form anymore. It's in, so it's going to be vertex form. Exactly, it's in vertex form. I mean, if I asked you to graph this parabola, this would almost be cake for you, right? You guys can do this? What would you do? What, would, what does a negative 13 do? Come on, you guys, i got to hear from you. It would move it down 13. And what does the positive 3 do? No. It would move it to the left 3 units. Remember, it's inside the parentheses exactly, Raven. It's inside the parentheses. When it's inside the parentheses, it moves it right and left. And it would move. It would move this particular one to the left. Does that make sense? Um, Justice is saying, or no, uh, Andre was saying, hey, it might stretch it. No, actually, it would stretch it if the number was out in front over here. But right now it's not. So, you know, we're good. Are we cool? Yeah. All right. Solving this is easy at this point. X plus three squared equals positive thirteen. Anyone questioning where I got that? I just took the negative 13 put them on the other side. Oh. X plus 3 equals the square root of 13. I took the square root of both sides. Everyone agree with that? Waiting for you. Aha, Raven. She's on top of it. She's like, no. No, because you tricked me like five times last week Wednesday. You need to add in the plus or minus. Exactly. See, Raven didn't forget it. When you take the square root of both sides, you need to throw in a plus or minus. Because we're dealing with a parabola here, and usually when you have a parabola, it crosses at two points. And with the problems that we've been dealing with, they cross at a positive and a, well, not necessarily a positive and a negative, but I mean, yeah. they cross twice. So that's where that takes into account both plus and minus. Is everyone clear as to why you add in the plus or minus? Do you guys understand that? Or do you guys just understand I need to? You don't understand why I need to, you just understand that you better do it or Mr. Dalton is going to tease you. It's because it crosses at a negative number and a positive number. Uh, all right, here, let me just show you real quick. If I have something like uh, k squared equals 9, and I want to figure out what k is. This is just on the side, by the way. k squared equals 9. I want to figure out what k is. You would tell me k equals 3, right? You'd say, hey, well, 3 times 3 is 9. Agreed? And, and how did you find that out? Well, I took the square root of that and took the square root of that. I got k equals 3. Square root of 9 is 3, right? And I would say, well, you're only half right. Because k can k be negative 3? What is negative 3 times negative 3? Positive 9 as well. 
So you forgot, you took into account the positive side. You forgot to take into account the negative side. That's why we add in this plus or minus when we're adding, taking the square root of both sides. Because it takes into account both of those options. Because a negative times a negative is a positive number, and a positive times a positive is a positive number. <laughs> Making sense to you? You online? Does that make sense? What about you? You? Yes. All right. That's on the side. That's 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 not to confuse you. I'm just ver verifying why I'm throwing in this random plus or minus. By the way, uh, Justice, you got a calculator on you. I don't got a calculator. I need to get x all by itself. So I'm going to put the negative uh, the three onto the other side. That makes it negative three. Cool. So I've got x equals negative three plus or minus the square root of thirteen. Just as I'm asking you for help, because uh, I don't know what the square root of 13 is off the top of my head. Can you use your calculator for that? Um, I don't know how to square root on this thing. Turn the thing 90 degrees. Uh, it's the sign on there. Okay, Raven's got it already. Slow yeah. poke. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to work my iPhone. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second, Raven. That's not right. That can't be right. It's, it's got to be like three point something. It's 3.60555. Ah, uh, there we go. Three point, oh, I see. Raven's telling me the answer already. She's saying, oh. well, negative 3 <laughs> plus 3.0655 is going to be point zero or 6.05, right? And then she also did the minus version, which is negative 6.605. So this is x equals this or x equals this. Both of these answers are correct. So wait, how did she get the... Wait one second. Check, 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 check. All right, good. What I was saying is Raven was um, correct in that. You know, she she. What were you gonna ask? How did how did she got here? How did you get these two numbers? Well. Uh, she knows that the negative 3 plus or minus the square root, I can write this as negative 3 plus or minus uh, 3.605. Right? Right? And then she just did, well, what is negative 3 plus 3.605? 0.605. What is negative 3 minus 3.605? Negative 6.605. She just used her calculator. That's it. Cool? Are we cool with this problem? You guys got it? Okay. So it's a little bit different from what I taught you on Wednesday, only in that I didn't, you know, use both sides of the equation. I only kept everything on one side of the equation. And this one just so happened to work nicely with um, not giving us any fractions to deal with. Although we shouldn't be afraid of fractions because I totally allow you guys to use calculators and calculate I mean calculators eliminate all fear of fractions right <clears throat> like yeah I don't really care about fractions I got a calculator that's, that, that makes me write it out Excuse well you me. know what I don't mind you writing it out either Excuse me. all right here I'm gonna erase this by the way can I erase three okay all right good erasing next one Move this thing down. Yeah, that's great. One second, one second, folks. All right, here we go. Yeah. All right, here, 4x squared plus 16x minus 9. Okay. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do it kind of quick. Read it off to me. It's 4x squared plus 16x. Minus 9 equals 0. We cool? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 4 everywhere. So I have uh, x squared plus 4x minus 9 fourths equals 0. Why did I put a big space there? I made room for two numbers because I'm going to do this weird complete the square trick. All right, good. 
I'm going to add something, I'm going to subtract something at the same time. So, what number am I going to add and subtract? Eight. No, not eight. Four. Four. Plus four, negative four. Because you take this number, you divide it by two. So four divided by two is two. Square that, two squared is four. Four. We cool? All right. Now what I'm going to do is these first three numbers over here is going to be... Um, turn into that. It's going to be x. Do you guys know what the number that's going to go inside that parentheses is? You say 4? You're wrong. But a good way to check to know whether or not you're wrong is I would foil that out in your head or maybe on paper. Foil it out and say, hey, wait a second, that doesn't look like that at all. I'll tell you what this foiled out is going to be. It's going to be x squared plus 8x plus 16. That's not the same thing. That's not the right number. You guys know what number is going to go in there? Two. Two. It's half of this thing. Good. If you foil that out, you'll find out that it's going to be the same thing. Are we cool? The only other thing i got to deal with is this negative 4 plus 9 or minus 9 over 4. Okay, it's fractions. Uh, I'm going to make this negative 16 over 4 minus 9 over 4. And I'll still have my equal 0. You guys understand why I did negative 16 over 4 minus 9 over 4? Yes, no, I don't know, I hate you. I don't know. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said I don't know. Um, because I want to combine these fractions, I want to combine all. I, I I've got the rest, the first three numbers, which is kind of my prize, and all the rest is kind of left over, and I want to combine those. So I'm adding two fractions that don't have the same denominator. So this four is the same as four over one. So in order to make this denominator four, I have to multiply the top and the bottom of that fraction by four. Sixteen over four. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I'm going to combine these fractions. You guys. You guys remember how to combine fractions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, it this number over here is always half of b. I mean, that's kind of how we designed it. In fact, the way I made you, the way I told you guys to figure out what number goes over there is I did a whole bunch of these problems with you, and you guys figured out the relationship from here to here to here. You guys remember that class? Maybe you don't remember that class because none of you guys were there. But, I mean, I'm just saying. I recorded it, and I put it online for you guys to watch. It was a good class. It was, like, one of the first Complete the Square videos. No, it's the second Complete the Square video. All right, anyway. Um, X plus 2 squared minus, uh, what's 16 minus 9? Oh, no, no, negative 16 minus 9. That would be... Um, not good at math. 25. Negative 25 over 4. Fractions, same denominator. You keep the denominator and you just do the thing to the top. We cool? Equals 0. I'm going to take that and put it over to that side. x plus 2 squared equals 25 over 4. What's the next step, folks? What's the next step? Divide four. Nope, can't divide four. I mean, I guess you could if you want a, a decimal. I don't really care about decimal, but. What's the next step? How do I get x all by itself? I need to get rid of this square right here. Whenever you solve algebra problems, you think of it like an onion. This is the middle, and then the next thing that's kind of protecting it is the 2, and the next thing that's protecting it is the, the, the square. So you want to get rid of the square on the outside. So um, Raven is saying you should square root. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So I square root both sides. So I have x plus 2 equals the square root of 25 over 4. Does everyone agree? Huh? Plus 9. 
There we go. Not only Raven didn't forget it, but you guys didn't forget it either. Awesome. Plus or minus. There we go. Yes. Very good. I love it. All right. Now, I'm trying to solve this algebra equation. I want to get x all by itself. How do I get x all by itself? What's stopping the x from being all by itself? The plus 2. So I just... No. Minus 2 because it's being added over here. So you minus over that side. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 25 divided by 4. So, this time I actually want to know, well, okay, um, you, Raven, you can throw it up there because just can't see your answer. I want these guys to, to tell me, what is the square root of 25 over 4? I mean, you, you can't tell it to me off the top of your head. you got to use your calculator here. <laughs> I ask these guys, to go, what is the square root of 25 over 4? And they both look at me and they go, Hmm. <laughs> As if they're actually trying to think about it. To be honest, with you, I can, I don't know what twenty five over four square root it is. But I love that you guys were like, hmm. <laughs> yes. And, and Raven threw out an answer, and I actually suspect that her answer is wrong. And I, I even feel like I know why she got it wrong. But I'm going to wait. I'll tell you why you got it wrong. Use your calculator. What is the square root of 25 over 4? That's all I want to know. Okay. Five. What is it? Five point. Five point what? Oh, I don't know. Alright, here's what you do. Okay? In your calculator, here's what Raven's doing wrong. Alright? And here's what you're probably doing wrong. Look, we got the answer. Now all we gotta do is plug into our calculator. How sad is it if we got to a multiple choice test, we did all of this work. And then at the end, we don't know how to plug the dang thing to our calculator. That's just dumb. So let me show you how to use a calculator. Okay? What some of you guys are doing, I bet, is this. You're doing the square root 25 divide 4. Yeah. That's what you're telling the calculator to do. You press square root 25 divide 4. I did 25 divide 4. Like, That's the right way. I square rooted... Whatever the answer is that. Something and I got 2.5. That's the right way. What, what the, you're telling the calculator to do if you type in this into your calculator is you're telling the calculator to do, what is the square root of 25? 5. Then now divide that by 4. Right? That's what you're telling the calculator to do. The calculator's like, no, I don't know. I don't, that, that's not right, right? But what you need to tell the calculator to do, uh, and you would get something like 1.25, I think. Yeah, 1.25. That's what you would do. But what you need to do to tell the calculator to do, and this is why Mr. Dalda is such a jerk about putting parentheses, is you would put square root of 25 divided by 4, then close the parentheses. Or, like Andre does, is he does, well, what is 25 over 4? And he gets a number. And then he says, okay, what's the square root of that? That's the correct way to do it. Does that make sense? If not, you're telling your calculator to put it in the wrong, put in the wrong things. By the way, I don't know what the right answer is. What is, what, you got 3 point what? 2.4. 2.4? Or 5 and 2.5. Okay. So this number right here is the same as 2.5. So I've got negative 2 plus or minus 2.5. Got it? Not 1.25, 2.5. All right. Now Raven's already going a couple steps ahead. And what is negative 2 plus 2.5? Two you can use your calculator if you want. You can use your brain if you want to. Just 0. 0.5. What is negative 2 minus 2.5? There we go. 
So x is equal to either 0.5 or negative 4.5. Now, Raven said it's 0.5 and negative 4.5, and I would actually say, venture to say, you're wrong, Raven. It's a very small difference, and it's very subtle. You're wrong because you said the word and. How can a number be both 0.5 and negative 4.5? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm correct because I said the word or. Because a number can be either 0.5 or negative 4.5. There is a difference, and actually, the and or scenario will come up later. So I want to make sure that your vocabulary is correct now. All of these things that you think that Mr. Dalde is doing just because he's being a jerk actually make sense later on. And I don't mind you guys thinking that I'm a jerk now because it will make sense to you later on. You guys will be like, wow, I really appreciate that Mr. Baldi was such a stickler about these parentheses or th that I said or instead of and. Because just you wait. It will make sense. The crazy mind of Mr. Baldi actually does make sense eventually. And if it doesn't make sense, just wait longer. <laughs> and if it, if it still doesn't make sense, I'm probably crazy. All right, are we cool with this? Are we good with this problem? Yeah, I like what Raven says. I think of it as a pain for a while, but at the end, it's a, oh, yeah, <laughs> moment. Yeah. yeah? Like, Mrs. Bell is like, wow, he's such a pain. He's such a jerk about doing this. But then you realize, oh, snap. Like, that actually does make sense. Yeah. It's crazy like that. Anyway, can I erase? Alright, cool. It's yeah. Well, I'm going to do a couple of things that I think are, are a little bit funky. Alright, here we go. Let me move down. Right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. Alright, here we go. What's my time? 9.43. I, I need to finish at 10.30. Alright, we got some time. Um, Let's do, let me just think, hold on. All right, here we go. Let's do this one. Read the second example problem, 2x squared plus 6x minus two. Okay. So here's what they want us to do. f of x equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 3. Is that right? Yeah, 2x squared plus 6x minus 3. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of add one more trick to this basket. And it's not really even that hard, per se. I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. All right. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is... There we go. In this case, f of x would equal 0. No, no, no. Yeah, in this case, I'm not setting it equal to 0. I'm not trying to look for the x-intercepts here. This is just, I want to graph that. Okay? I want to graph this standard equation. Now, you guys are tripping out because you're like, wait a second, it's in standard form. I can't graph that. If you gave it to me in vertex form, I could totally graph that. Right? But in standard form, are you kidding me? Right? That's what you guys are saying in your mind. Mrs. Daughter, you're cray-cray. Okay, what I would do, I think that maybe this would be the best way to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing we've been doing for the last two example problems. But in this case, when I divide everything by 2, this isn't 0, so it's not going to remain 0. It's not, usually I have an equal 0 over here. And then you got the 0 divided by 2 is still 0, so it doesn't really make any difference. I'm going to keep that 2 down there. I'm going to kind of hide it out and then deal with it later. Let me show you how I do it. It's not that bad, okay? I'm going to divide everything by 2. So this is f of x divided by 2 equals x squared plus 6, oh no, not 6, 3x minus, 
Sorry. Minus three over two. I guess you could write 1.5 if you want. Are we cool? Alright. And why did I put that big space there? For the complete the score trick. What number should I add there? I'm going to add a number, I'm going to subtract the same number. What number should that be? No. Oh, no. Yeah, no, no, no. You might not even be able to think about it. You might have to use your calculator. I don't mind. You guys can deal with decimals or fractions. I don't really care. Raven, it's not 9. I'll tell you what it is. It's 9 over 4. Also known as 2.25. Because you take this number and you half it. What's half of 3? 3 over 2. That's what half of 3 is. It's 3, 3 over 2, right? Square that. You'll get 9 over 4. Because the square goes with the 3 and the square goes with the 2. That's it. Try typing this into your ca calculator. What is 1.5 squared? You should get 2.25. That's the same thing. 9 over 4 is the same thing as 2.25. If I had a calculator, I would probably do things in decimals. But since I didn't have a calculator on me, I used just the fractions. It wasn't even that bad. Because you know how to square 3 over 2, right? That's just 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. Are we cool? All right. So this numbers right here, those things go like this, x. And what's the number that's going to be over here? Raven is saying, wait a second, I'm confused. We were looking at normal numbers, and now we're not. It's because all of the previous numbers we were dealing with, this number right here was an even number. So you can nicely divide it by 2 and then square it. But in this case, it's an odd number. So when you divide it by 2, you're going to get a fraction, and then square it, and you get another fraction. It's a pain to deal with. And you know what? Deal with it. I hate to say it, but... Odd numbers come up just as good as even numbers. Yeah. Odd numbers come up half the time. So, deal with it. I gave you a calculator. What do you want? What more do you want from me? And it's not even that bad. It's just three over two. Three over two squared is nine over four. What number should go here? Raven, I, I don't mean to sound harsh, and I, I hope I'm not. Exactly, Jillian. The number that should go here is just 3 over 2. Because remember, I told you, the number that goes here is half of this number. What's half of 3? Also known as 3 over 2. Just throw the 2 downstairs. That's it. What do you, what do you want? All right. Now, this one over here, that's negative 9 over 4 minus 6 over 4. You guys are thinking, wait a second, why didn't he write 3 over 2? I didn't square it. I didn't square the 3 over 2 and got 6 over 4. I did a common denominator thing, right? So, I mean, just multiply the top and bottom by 2 for that fraction over there. This is not new stuff to you, right? All right. So, this becomes x plus 3 over 2 squared minus 15 over 4. Are we cool? Okay, one last step. 
I told you guys that I was going to hide something out and then deal with it later. F of x over 2, because I solved for f of x over 2, not f of x all by itself. So how do I get rid of this divide by 2? Multiply. You multiply it. So f of x equals 2 times x plus 3 over 2 squared minus 15 over 4. Everyone agree? Very good, Raven. I love that you said multiply by 2. Does everyone agree? Say I agree or I don't agree. I do feel, but I feel that something is wrong. Raven's agreeing with me, but then she feels like there's something wrong. Yeah, and I'm wondering if tricky. I'm wondering <laughs> if I I'm, I'm training you guys to never agree with me okay, because I always ask, "Do I, you agree?" And then I ask you, "Say agree or disagree?" And then I say, "Because you're wrong." You yeah. say it in a voice that makes you feel like you're not even thinking straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm always unsure. laughs> this is not Oh, I'm so unsure of myself. You know, I ask you these questions so you can be sure of yourself, so you can yeah. say, "No, I agree." Because I'll even ask, I'll even question you when you're right. Yeah. I hate when you say it so confidently and you're like, you're wrong. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys caught me, actually. There is something wrong. There is. I multiplied the 2 over here. I didn't multiply the 2 over here. Oh. I didn't distribute. So did you negative 15 over... Over 2. Because when you multiply this by 2, 15 over 4 oh. times 2... Right? This becomes two and this becomes that gets killed. Here, I'll show I'll show you guys something. Like like if I had y over three equals a plus b, and I need to multiply the right hand side by three and the left hand side by three, then you better multiply that like that. Or maybe more familiar like that. This three cancels out with that, and then you need to remember to distribute that thing to both of those things. Okay. This is a term. This is a term. I need to make sure to give that two to both this term and that term. That so yes, something was wrong. I was messing with you. <laughs> now it's right. Can you graph this? I mean, maybe you might not be able to draw the perfect graph, but can you tell me what you think the graph might look like? Well, what does a 15 over 2 do? In fact, I'll tell you what 15 over 2 is. It's 7.5. You go down 7.5. You go down 7.5. You take your regular parabola, drop it down 7.5. Cool? What does the 1.5 do? That's the 3 over 2. You go left. You go left 1.5 or 3 over 2. Okay? What does this 2 do? It makes it bigger. It stretches it which way? It stretches it vertically. Exactly. It makes it skinnier. You're taking the gummy bear and you're stretching it vertically. And it's like, please don't bite off my head. And it's going like, ah, and it's getting all skinny. Exactly. So, I mean, I can graph this for you. The ugly version of the graph, which is all I really care about, is I can tell you that it's going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to go down right about here. And one, two, so it's going to go right about here. And this would be my normal parabola, but that's not the one I want because I want something that's a little bit skinnier. Boom, I'm done. Like, seriously, that's it. Your friends ask you, gruff this for me, and you just be like, uh, here. That's what it looks like. And then you just be like, boom. Walk away. Drop the pen. Walk away. Be all like. <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Raven. She's saying, remember, less than one. When it's a fraction over here, you're getting a fatter parabola. When you're, it's a number over here, you're getting a skinnier parabola. But I don't like thinking about it like that. When there's a fraction here, you're getting a vertically compressed parabola, which makes it fatter.
you're taking the gummy bear and you're crushing it between your hands. When you when there's a number out, when there's a number bigger than one here, you're vertically stretching it, you're taking the the gummy bear by its head and by its toes and stretching it until it breaks in half, and then you eat off the head. You morbid, morbid, morbid student. Cool. Ms. Dolly is weird like that. All right. Let's recap the steps that we did. We we messed with the um, we, we we messed with the coefficient out in front, right? Why do we do that? Why do we divide everything by two? To get the x squared, not by itself, but to get the x squared with a number one in front of it. See the number one? You guys say, no, I don't see no number one. Yeah, it's because I was too lazy to write it. But there is a number one there because I divided everything out by two. Right? The next step we did was we did this complete the square ridiculousness. Okay? We combined fractions. And then we dealt back with that two after the after that. Do you guys understand each step of this process? Because I'm going to show you something that will blow your mind. I'm going to move on to chapter 8. I didn't write any of it. Oh, you didn't write the steps down. I don't mind that you didn't write the steps down. Raven has a question. I'm going to answer your questions. I'm going to give you like maybe two minutes to kind of like decompress and then I want you to write down what I write down, and I think that, could we go further and solve it like we did before? What do you mean solve it like we did before? Oh, I see what you're saying. R Raven wants to know, can we, can we um, solve it like we did where um, you set this equal to zero, and then add... 15 over 2 to both sides, and then divide by 2. Yeah, you can totally do that. If I were to ask you the question, like, the reason why I did these kind of weird steps where I, I like, hid the 2 over here and then multiplied it back up is because I didn't have a 0 out in front. If I had a 0 for f of x, the problem would actually be easier. But all that would give me is it would tell me where the thing crosses the, the x-axis. It wouldn't tell me the equation for the graph. Cool? So, in order to tell me the equation for the graph, I needed to kind of keep that f of x as f of x. But if Raven, what you're saying is you want to go further with it, and if I were to ask you not what is the equation for the graph, but what is the x-intercepts, you would start off with this thing being equal to zero, and then you would basically just solve it the same way. Actually, what you would do is you could just set this thing equal to zero, and then just move on to here. So actually this new, harder way is really just doing only half. Because like Raven said, we can go further and actually solve for what x is equal to. Yeah. But I didn't ask you to do that. I just left things as variables. All right, any other questions? Is anyone else confused about any of these steps? Because I'm going to use... I'll tell you what, I'm going to move on to chapter 8, and I told you chapter 8 is probably one of the most important things in Algebra 1. It's also one of the hardest things, and it is, um, it's probably one of the most, it's, it's one of the most important things, it's also one of the most complicated things. And usually, what is my biggest pet peeve that you guys often hear me say? Do you guys remember? I hate it when math teachers, what? Do you guys remember? I hate it when math teachers pull equations out of their butt and throw it up on the board and say, memorize this for the rest of your life. And you say, I don't want to memorize it. That's gross. Yeah. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the most important equations that math teachers make you memorize. But I'm going to show it to you from scratch. I'm going to show you how we built this cake. Then after that, you memorize this equation. And I'll show you even a cool way to memorize it. 
If you guys can do the, the, those things and understand where it comes from, understand that none of this is magic. None of this is magic. You guys understand each step of this process. And I would say that you don't need to memorize this however. I'm going to make you do this problem so many times that you will memorize it. That's just the way it is. Because the best way to learn this thing is just to use it a bunch of times. Got it? So, you don't need to memorize it. It would probably be in your best interest too. And I'll show you some cool ways to memorize it. All right, anyway. Okay, you guys ready? All right, I got to get ready for this one because this one is... All right. I'm going to show you guys the quadratic equation. It's not magic. I'll show you what it looks like really quickly, and then we'll we'll come back to it. You don't need to write this down. I'm just going to put it at the top of the board. The quadratic equation is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you guys are thinking, oh my goodness, is that what he's going to show us? And I'm going to say, yes, we are going to get to that. Don't freak out. I asked my brother for help on one of my homework problems and he did this and I was like, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> well, let me show you, let me show you where it comes from, okay? We spent all this time in completing the square and what is the advantage of completing the square? The advantage of completing the square of chapter 7 is you can hit every single kind of quadratic equation or kind of quadratic function, right? If we did the factoring method, that only works on numbers that are nicely chosen. But if we did the quadratic, or if we did the complete the square method, it's like a bazooka. You can definitely kill whatever animal it is you're, you you want to get in there to do, right? It's almost like, what would you rather have to defend yourself, a fly swatter or a bazooka? <laughs> well, I'd rather have a fly swatter if I'm trying to kill a fly, but I'd rather have a bazooka if I'm trying to kill anything. That's what the complete the square does. It works against flies and everything else. Okay, I'm going to show you another one that, another style of doing things that is also a bazooka. It's kind of hard to use, it's kind of clunky, but when you use it, it will work, I guarantee it. Won't be the quickest way, but it will be the most powerful way. It is also a bazooka. In fact, it is not also a bazooka, it's actually the same exact thing as completing the square, we're just going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to add a little bit of a spin to it. Okay? So I'm going to start off with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Write this down. Now, do you recognize this? What is this? This is the standard form of a quadratic equation. This could represent any kind of quadratic function. You just change what a, b, and c are. Right? So that's totally familiar. All I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this. I'm not going to have numbers in there. I'm just going to solve it. Okay? That's all I'm going to do. Using the complete the square method. And you'll find that we'll get this crazy answer that looks crazy. But, it's, but then you think, wait a second, if I can solve this problem right here and get an answer for that, that's like doing the complete the square method. It's almost like your dad's a computer programmer, right, Andre? It's almost like writing a complicated program, and then the next time someone wants to put in the numbers, they just be like, well, just change the numbers. And then you put in different numbers, and then it spits out the thing. Well, that's what the, we're going to do. We're going to write the complicated program. And then we'll have this powerful weapon. And if you want to use different numbers, well, you just put in different things in there and it will spit out the answer. That's the power behind this thing. All right, anyway, enough hype about it. Let's actually just do it. The first problem that I see is that there is a number in front of the x squared term, right? So, and another warning. This is going to get long and it's going to look complicated, but hang in there. 
because you know all of these steps, I guarantee it. If you were anywhere to awake in the last hour that we've been talking, you can do all of these steps. The first step that I see here is to get rid of that A value. I want it to be one. So I'm gonna divide everything by A. So I have x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a equals zero. You guys know that step, right? Yeah. Why do you think I put in a big space in between there? I'm just curious to know. For that complete the square trick, right? So I'm going to add some number and subtract that same number. Okay. By the way, here's some side work. What do I add and subtract? We're going to do some side work here. What number do I add and subtract? Well, I like what Raven is saying, half of B over A. Okay, half of that is B over 2A. Right? And then what? And then squared. Exactly, Raven. So that's B squared over 4A squared. Right? So that's the number I need to add here and subtract over there. No, no, this is totally wrong. I mean, no, no, not wrong. I'm sorry, this is totally right. I'm not trying to trick you. This is totally right. <laughs> I told you, it's totally wrong, and you should have seen Andre's face. He was like, oh, you jerk, Mr. Dalde. You jerk. No, 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 no. No, Raven asked me a question. She goes, is this wrong? And I'm like, no, no, it's totally right. But I said, oh, it's totally wrong. No, no, it's, it's right. All right. I'm not tricking you. All right. I wouldn't dare trick you at this point. That's what I'm going to add and subtract here. So I'll just rewrite this top line, but instead I'm going to fill in the blanks. x squared plus b over a, x plus b squared over 4a squared minus b squared over 4a squared plus c over a equals 0. Believe me, I'm going to do this once for you. I'm going to show you how to get the quadratic equation. I'm going to prove it to you. And then, from now on, you will not have to do stuff this hard. The quadratic equation will become easy, quick, you'll be amazed. It does look complicated. But it's not really complicated. I mean, I'm showing you each step, and you know each step to take, right? The thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this CA over A squared. Now, why did I do that? Because these first three terms, I already know what's going to happen to them. They're going to go into that parentheses, right? I'm going to have to deal with the last part over here. And I already see that I want to make this um, common denominators. Actually, I'm looking at this now. That's not a common denominator. I should multiply both the top and bottom by 4. And now I have a common denominator. Does that make sense? Because I'm going to add these at the end. I mean, you've seen that happen before. OK, all right. So the first three numbers, those go into that weird parentheses. This is x. What's the number that's going to go out of here? Actually, it's not even going to be a number. It's going to be kind of this weird expression. What is going to go over here? B over A, half of B over A, exactly. So it's B over 2A. Do you guys agree? OK, all right. Now this thing over here, I'm going to combine. This will be minus, should be minus, yeah, sure. 
um, b squared plus 4ac all over 4a squared. So I did plus negative b squared over 4ac all over 4a squared. Because I have common denominators, I can combine those fractions. Are we cool? Actually, I'm sorry, can I do one step instead? Because I think it'd probably make a little more sense. I'm gonna have to back up just a little bit. It's not, it's not, I didn't make a mistake. I'm just gonna do something else. I'm going to take this over to the right hand side. This negative b squared over four a squared becomes positive b squared over four a squared. This positive four ac all over four a squared becomes negative. So this is equal to b squared over 4a squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. And by the way, you see 4ca, and I wrote 4ac. That's the same thing, because you're multiplying it. You can multiply it in any order you want, right? Are we cool with this so far? When you're solving this, could you use either of those equations you put? What? Oh, when I did it before, or this one? Yeah. I just did this because I think that it's going to help me skip a step, like a half of a step. It's not even that big of a deal. I am, however, going to do this. I've got a common denominator, right? I'm going to just erase this, and I know you guys are freaking out because you're thinking, I'm writing in pen, how can you, I can't erase. Sorry. I, I don't think I have enough room if I were to do this whole thing. But all I did was I, I said, well, there's 4a squared over here, 4a squared over here. Yeah. I have Those are the same denominators. I can just make it over one big denominator, 4a squared. <laughs> Raven is saying, I feel like it's cool, but I, again, I feel like there's a gut feeling that it's wrong. I, Raven, I'm not trying to trick you this time. I promise. And when I smile like that, you guys don't feel comforted. No, no, I'm, seriously, I'm not trying to trick you. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I'm going to get x all by itself. Okay? Everyone agree? Yeah, I was kind of trying to trick you there. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right, the plus or minus. I didn't think you would fall for it, but okay. I got confused. I thought those two were separated. What do you mean? I thought it was separate. I thought it was you split it or something. No, I didn't. I thought that wasn't part of it. Okay. Um, when you have the square root of a fraction, okay, you could take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. This, this becomes, here, I'll show you. Remember when we had the square root of 25 over 4? Oh, 25 over 4. Yeah. Remember when we had that? Yeah. And, and, um, and what we needed to do was do, what is 25 over 4? And then square root that. Yeah. What you could do is, that's the same as, what is the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 4? That's the same. I'll prove it to you. Ready? 25, well, square root of 25 is 5, right? Square root of 4 is 2. 5 over 2 is 2.5. That's the same as the answers you got when you put it in there. Are we cool? So I have the square root of some big fraction here. I can say, well, that's the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Okay? The reason why I can split it up is because I'm thinking to myself, if I take the square root of the bottom, I can, I can pull that out of the square root. Right? What is the square root of 4a squared? Two a, exactly. She already said it. Two a. How did you get two, Raven? How did you get two?
Because 2 times 2 is 4. I mean, think about it. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. Okay. Right? Okay. Can I just erase this and make that 2a? Okay. 2a. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one last step. Oh. Uh, Raven is saying, don't forget the top. I can't take the square root of b squared minus 4ac. If I had just the square root of b squared, then I could do it. But since it's b squared minus 4ac, I have to leave it as that. It's kind of like, what is the square root of 9 plus x? Well... You, it's not the square root of 9 plus the square root of x. That's, that's wrong. That's wrong math. Okay? I can't really do anything here. If there was no x there, then I could take the square root of that, and that would be fine. But since it's plus x, this is kind of one term right there. Those are together. You can't do anything there. You stop. Got it? I have to stop with that one, the top. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this b over 2a to the other side. How would I do that? It's being added. Subtract. So I subtract it. All right. All I did, all I did was I took the b over 2a and put it on that side. So I put a negative in front of the b. Cool? Before you write this down, wait, before you write this down, let me do something. It's got, I've got two fractions I'm adding. It's got a common denominator. I'll just take this and put it all over 2a. Good? Done. This, my friends, is the quadratic equation. It is the solution to all of those complete the square problems without having to do complete the square. It is completely amazing, rad. So that's just the problem to find out. No, no, no. This is just me building the machine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you're building the equation. I'm building the equation. Okay. Once I give you the machine, this is the machine. You guys will be able to mow down all of these problems. But before I get there, I need to build it. So building the machine is the hardest part. We went through the hardest part. But the whole point of me doing that is so that you all remember, I didn't pull it out of my butt and throw it up on the board and say, memorize this. This came from things that we're very familiar with. It might look a lot harder than what you're used to, but it's not, right? But everything I did, I didn't do magic. I didn't even try to trick you, except for that plus or minus. But I mean, you guys weren't tricked. <laughs> you guys weren't tricked for a second on that one. Yeah. So here's what you do. You're gonna start with. You're going to start with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, right? And whenever I ask you to, for the answer of problems like this, what, did, what would I ask? How would I ask that from you? Whenever, I, whenever an answer looked like this, how would I ask, ask you to answer that? Standard. I would ask you, what is a, b, and c, right? And you would just tell me what a, b, and c is. You would identify a, b, and c. Would you like to know why I did that way back in January? Because you do the same thing here. If I give you a problem like this, you identify A, B, and C. Three, four, and two. Then all you do to get the answer, instead of going through the whole complete the square process, you can just say, okay, well, Bs are fours, A's are threes, and C's are twos. Plug it into the thing, use your calculator, voila, you're done. That's it. Blows your mind how cool this is. 
Okay, so how do I memorize this? Because this thing is crazy. Yeah. It's cray cray. All right, can I erase this? Did you guys write this down? You guys can take a picture of it on your computer screen if you want. This is being recorded. Right? Yeah, this is being recorded. I'll give you like five seconds to take a picture. Go, take a picture. <laughs> Man, there's so many rolls in my neck. I got like five chins. <laughs> All right, we good? Can I can I race? All right. Um. So check this out. I'll draw a story for you, and I know I'm going over time. Deal with it because I think this is really important. Ooh, let's do it quick then. All right, you ready? <laughs> so there was this dude. All right, and he was kind of. There's this boy. His name was Justice. He was kind of a square. What does that mean when I say he's kind of a square? It was like back in the 90s, kind of a square wasn't a good thing. Jerk. Like a meathead. Like a jock. <laughs> like a jock or... Okay, oh, they're, like, like, they're like square. Like, like they're square. All right. Boy, Justice. Here, Justice. I need you to have a shirt for me. So, there's this boy. It's kind of a square. This, this guy doesn't look like a square. He's got all long hair. Come over here, Andre. <laughs> You're more. You've got the clean cut kind of thing yeah. going for you. You're kind of a square. This is a, that dude's a surfer dude. Here's this boy. He's kind of a square. Okay. Now, he was unsure. No, when you're unsure, you're unsure. Go like that. Unsure. He was unsure about going to this radical party. Now you guys are thinking, man, Mr. Alden, that's so dumb. Why do you say radical? Radical is such a dumb word. It's like from the '80s. All right. Anyway, whatever. There's this boy. What was he? He was kind of a square. He was unsure about going to a what? Party. No, not a, any party. A radical party. A radical. A <laughs> radical party. Radical. A radical party. <laughs> Got it? Actually, you know what? I, I kind of messed up the story. I'm sorry. This here's this boy. He's kind of a square, but more importantly, he's a negative boy. You're negative. No, you got to frown. Upside down. There we go. Negative boy. Negative boy. And you were unsure about going to a radical party. A radical party. Now, when you were at the party, you started being kind of a square. So what does that kind of mean? It was like jerk. Not not really cool. You know, you're not like chill, like you know, long hair justice <laughs> over here. You're you're kind of uh, all right, anyway. Um did I, did I stick the middle finger to anyone? I didn't realize it. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, because you were a square, you missed out on talking to some four awesome chicks. There's these four. They were awesome. And they're chicks. I don't know why you're talking to chickens, but that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe the party was at a farm or something. All right. There's four awesome chicks. Um... Whose names were uh, Coco, Kay, Raven, and Kiana. They were awesome, and they were chicks. And he missed out on talking to them because four awesome chicks don't want to talk to kind of a dude who's a, a square. And I love what Raven said. She said, "Peep." Okay. The party was over at two a.m. Two in the morning. Tell me the story. There was this boy, and you were a square. No, you weren't a square yet. Oh. You were negative. You're negative. Yes, exactly. You were negative. Yeah. <coughs> and you were thinking about going to this party, but you were kind of unsure. Unsure about going to this party. And what kind of party was it? A radical. It was a radical party, dude. <laughs> At the party, you were a you were kind of a square. Because you were a square, you talk, You missed out on talking to four... four. Chicks. No, not just chicks. <laughs> awesome chicks. Awesome, awesome chicks. chicks. <laughs> they were awesome. <laughs> that whole party was over at... 2 a.m. 2 a.m. All right, sit down. Check this out. Ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again. Ready? I know. Everyone's like, hee hee, this is such a funny song. Ready? All right. So Andre was what? 
Tell it, tell it to me one more time. I just and he I. Was he was a negative boy. Negative B. All right. And what what were you thinking about doing? Went to a radical party. But you were unsure. You were unsure. Plus yeah. or minus unsure. I don't know. Good, bad. I don't know. All right. Now, what kind of party was it? A radical party. A radical party, and. A square root is also known as a radical, just letting you know. At the party, you were a? Square. Boy was square. Because you were a square, what did you do? Miss out. You missed out on four awesome chicks. On four awesome chicks. Okay. When was the party over? 2 a.m. Look, it's a quadratic equation. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. Yes, my fellow. Seriously, when, when sometimes when some people are taking tests, I, I actually watch them take tests and they're thinking, okay, wait, there's this negative boy, and they're not sure we're at a party. Awesome chicks. Okay, all right, got it. And they, and they go. Hey, any way you, 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 you want to use to memorize it, go for it. I mean, people use song or whatever. I like that example because I like embarrassing my students and saying, well, <laughs> you're kind of a square dude and, you know. Yeah, stories are weird. It's actually how I memorized the alphabet backwards. Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-O-K-G-I-H-G-F-E-D-C-B-A. I actually got pulled over once because I was so tired from driving home from this radical party and... I was in college and I was like so tired. So I started swerving a little bit and then like the cop quote pulled me over and thought I was drunk. I wasn't drunk, I don't drink at all. But uh, he was like, can you recite the alphabet for me? I was like, sure, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? He goes, no, 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 can you recite it backwards? And I look at him and I say, I don't think anybody. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, O, K, J, H, G, F, D, C, B, A. And he goes, okay, well, I'll let you off with a warning, you can go. <laughs> Radical party, dude was kind of a square, the boy was kind of a square, missed out on four awesome chicks, party was over at 2 a.m. Anyway, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. I think that I'm done. I have to be done by now. The next time we meet, I will show you how to apply this. But for now, I want you to know that this is not magic. So usually I write, if this, then, if this is true, if this is the problem, then the answer is this. I write a little if-then statement. If this, then the answer. There was this dude. He was a boy. Unsure. Radical party. Boy was a square. Minus four awesome chicks. Divided over by 2 a.m. All right, folks. That is an hour and a half of awesomeness. I know. Your brains are fried. You're all frustrated. You're all tired. I'll talk to you guys later. And on that note, hasta the luego. Five minutes are See you. I gotta go.